so with your host, Aldrin St. Pierre. So Aldrin, I guess um, desperate times, uh, like he says, calling for, for desperate, for, for drastic measures. Well, indeed, and what we'll be doing this evening is that we'll be getting some reaction from various political parties, including those industries that have been infected, that have been affected, rather, by this announcement by the president, including the Restaurant Association. We'll also be speaking to the liquor industry, how, what they make of this decision that has been taken by the president. The country officially moving to level three lockdown starting at midnight or up until mid-January. Mm. That unfiltered starts now with me, Aldrin St. Pierre. And welcome to Unfiltered. My name is Aldrin Simpier. Tonight we look at the measures announced by President Cyril Ramaphosa to stabilize the country as it's confronted with the new strain of coronavirus. We get the views from political parties as they react to the president's speech. We also have invited political analysts to unpack the implications of the announcement to the day-to-day -day lives of South Africans who are already feeling the pinch of this lockdown. First, we start off with Wendy Alberts, who is from the Restaurant Association of South Africa. Wendy, good evening and welcome to Unfiltered. You have been saying for the past few days leading up to this announcement, please, please, please do not impose any further restrictions on businesses, especially those in the restaurant industry. Absolutely. You know, over the last couple of days, we um, said to government we need to work with a collaboration in terms of bringing the most minimal impact onto our industry. You know, we understand that there is decisions that need to be made. We have to support the government. We are certainly have to respect the president's decision. We are respectful of his leadership in moving forward. And it is definitely a situation that is not favorable to our industry. We have got severities that are going to take place. This is putting our industry in a complete panic. There are many discussions that we need to have very, very imminently. Discussions with banks, landlords. We need to know what's happening with TERS. We need to understand what's happening with the UIS. We need to mobilize our staff, get our staff um, on short term. It means that we have to let a lot of staff uh, on, um, on, on short time. We've got to retrench some staff. And we are moving through to the most vulnerable time in our season in the restaurant sector, which is January, February. So this is definitely not a, uh, a result that we had called for. We certainly thought that we would be able to be the... Um, this sensation of on-site consumption and only um, for people to be able to enjoy alcohol in a, in, a, in a place that is controlled, which restaurants can offer. And that way we could slowly over time remodel the behavior of the public by only allowing them to drink in a place that has a liquor license or an establishment that holds a liquor license. So okay. there's a lot of situations, a lot of uh, discussions. We, we are feeling the panic, the the industry is certainly in a very, very um, difficult space. There's stock that we've brought in for the next couple of days. That stock needs to be returned, uplifted. We need to work with the food chain, the suppliers. So it is a very complex time for us, and we have not been even in a, in a marginal position to have presented any type of financial recovery over this last six months. Okay, Wendy, really appreciate your time. Still have to go through those regulations that will be, um, that will be outlined. Um, to at least I think the president said tomorrow we would find out more details around some of those announcements that have been made. But thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Have to wait and see how your industry is able to survive this particular level three lockdown. Let's go speak to Jesse Duarte, who is the deputy secretary general of um, the ANC. Met Duarte, good evening and welcome to Unfiltered. First of all, just that impassioned plea coming from the president around the behavior of South Africans. Thank you very much, uh, Eldon. Yes, we um, fully support the decisions taken by the government, although these decisions are, are quite difficult um, for all the businesses. In particular, uh, as I was listening to Wendy, the, the, the restaurant industry and their employees, uh, we understand and empathize with the fact that many people will struggle uh, due to the fact that, you know, they won't make as much uh, business as they used to. But this is a time for us to reflect on the most important decision that we must make, and that is the decision to save lives and to try and flatten the curve once more, um, and also to take away the, the vectors that have really created the problem that we now face, which is it's not only the new variant of the virus, that's one factor. 
Uh, the real factor is our, our behavior has not changed sufficiently to enable us to um, get to a point where if there's a third, fourth, and fifth wave, we're going to be able to cope. The biggest crisis we face is our healthcare professionals are under stress. I saw that myself today. I visited a hospital uh, for myself, not for COVID, for another matter. And I was very aware of the absolute stress that nurses, doctors, and laboratory assistants are under, and whether or not they're going to be able to cope going forward for um, another few months, mm -hmm. it's going to be hard to say. We appeal particularly to the young people in our country, the future leadership of this country, that you know the raves, the parties, the beach parties, the gathering in the parks, all of these are, are places where you will be affected and you will in turn affect other people. Uh, one rave in KZN created a crisis for over 300 families. That's what the statistics show and say. So we really are appealing to our young people. Um, it is a difficult time for you. You've had a hard year. You've ha hardly had any fun. Uh, there hasn't been time for you to have fun. You've had to work from home. But we're asking you to make this little bit of extra, um, extra work mm -hmm. to, to save lives, to, uh, to give yourself the opportunity to be alive uh, uh, in the next year. Life is very important, Eldon, and I think while, while the, the measures are harsh, let's not pretend that they're not harsh. What we really are about is to forget our political differences not to work on this matter from a party political perspective, but to unite as South Africans under the, these conditions and to help each other move forward. Um, hopefully we'll come out of this. We'll flatten the curve, I hope, by the 15th or 16th of January, and perhaps there can be a relaxation mm -hmm. of the regulations. But until then, we believe that if we um, follow the protocols, uh, as the president had described them, we are likely to drive down the rate of infection, and that's what we need. At DSG, just quickly, one of the things that the president didn't mention is uh, the decision that was taken by the UK government to ban travel between South Africa as well as, as the UK. Has you, have you, as a political party, engaged with your UK counterparts with regards to this decision at a political level? Not as yet, Aldrin, we're intending to. Um, you know, it's a difficult time of the year. We think it's an, it's an unfortunate decision that w was taken to blame another country for a, 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 a hype in, a, in your COVID uh, infections. Uh, two people apparently had gone to the UK uh, from South Africa. And, you know, it's possible that they did in affect other, infect other people, but it's unlikely that they infected the entire um, UK to the extent that they had to go to a lockdown. I think that what uh, we will engage them, uh, we will be engaging them soon to discuss, uh, you know, how we can also all work together to make sure that things uh, do shape and mm -hmm. change, but including the narrative, uh, uh, including the narrative that okay. uh, is about. Thank you so much for that. That is uh, the Deputy Secretary General of the ANC, Jesse Duarte. Now let's bring into the conversation Lakin Dimani, who is a convener at the Liquors Traders Formation. Good evening and welcome to Unfiltered. Lucky. the last time you and I spoke, um, there was a sense of anticipation that this announcement could happen, and indeed it did happen, that uh, the sale of alcohol is now being prohibited, including on-site consumption. Uh, good evening, uh, Aldrin, and good evening to SABC News uh, viewers. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, we, we, we have had the president uh, uh, call, we've had his uh, address to the country, and, and we accept, we accept that, you know, uh, things could not uh, continue as normal. Uh, something had to give, and the industry had to be unfortunately closed for two weeks as we gather enough strength as a country to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. We, we accept that, uh, Aldrin, even though we are disappointed that uh, we won't be able to uh, earn a living to support our families. And we're looking at 250,000 uh, direct jobs affected in the tavern space. So we are worried about that. And, and overall, the liquor industry 
one million jobs uh, are, are, are on the line. But, but, but I guess those are some of the gifts that were expected uh, to make, to be able to support the country. We stand firm with the government and the president uh, in this hour of need. And we support these initiatives to make sure that we flatten the, gear, the curve as it were. In terms of your submission to the NCCC, uh, were there any trade-offs um, that you said that this is what we are willing to do as the industry to try and curb the spread of the virus and also um, this binge drinking? Yes, yes, most certainly, Aldrin. The way trade-offs, uh, I'll just give you maybe two examples. We were willing not to operate over uh, the 31st of December as well as the 1st of January, but also we were willing to trade as off-premise making sure that our taverns do not operate as on-premise, but uh, get a special dispensation to operate uh, as off-premise. Uh, but obviously, government uh, saw it differently, which we have fully respect. And now we have to, you know, uh, almost uh, guard our strength. And then and, and, and hopefully in the next 14 days, we will be able to be able to be allowed to trade once again. But I must commend uh, Aldrin, you know, uh, liquor manufacturers, uh, SAB, Distel, Heineken, Diageo, and Penerica, for continuing to invest, you know, their money into compliance programs to make sure that, you know, in this hour of need, when taverns are not able to operate, we still continue, you know, to uh, educate on issues of compliance so that when we open on the 14th uh, or 15th of January, give or take, we are then in the right space to be able to provide a stable environment that supports governments in fighting uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. Let's just quickly then touch on um, the loss of income that the industry may suffer. This has been something that has been emphasized a lot during um, the first few months of the lockdown, level, the hard lockdown level five, including level four. Um, what do you think the impact would be this time around, considering as well that it's happening during this festive season cycle? I think the economic losses will be measurable. I mean, uh, this is the time of the season in which uh, manufacturers and liquor traders uh, will uh, make uh, just over 30 percent of their volume in this time. And the fact that we're now being closed almost in, a, in a halfway through the season, uh, it means that, you know, and we having not recovered from the first uh, lockdown, it means it's going to take a lot of time for us to, to recover. In fact, there I say that, you know, taverns, uh, I, I suspect more than 50% of them will struggle to open, you know, when, uh, when we are allowed to open once again. But, you know, be that as it may, I need to also state on record that we understand the issue of lives that the president wants to save, and we support that call. Issue of livelihoods, I think that is something that we can look at uh, at a later stage. But obviously, we are worried about the livelihood uh, that, that are going to be affected. You know, people that are going to wake up tomorrow morning not knowing what to do because they can't go back to work. During the time when there was the ban on the sale of alcohol, how prevalent was the quote-unquote black market at the time? And do you think that this time around it will resurge? We are equally worried about the black market. In fact, the illicit trade of alcohol in a space under which we're locked out was estimated to be well over 9 billion rand. Mm. This is the money that should have gone into a fiscus. But yes, another problem, Aldrin. Now... Uh, we will have to then defend a sector that is operating illegally because now that alcohol is not allowed to be sold in a legal way, people are going to take chances, people are going to sell this liquor in an irresponsible way, in an illegal way, meaning that the effects that alcohol have been blamed for having a, a, a major cost on various issues that President alluded to, they're not going to stop. But now are you going to hold the liquor industry accountable for those? I, I, I guess not. But, you know, as a responsible industry, we're going to do whatever it takes to ensure that our liquor traders do not partake in this type of initiative. And those that, you know, uh, conduct themselves in an illegal way to sell liquor, we're going to report them. We're going to ensure that the law enforcement, you know, is meant to come to bear on their actions. Thank you so much for that. At least um, you have it there, commitment there from Lucky Ndimani, who is a convener at the Liquor Traders Formation, that if there are those who will be selling alcohol illegally, quote unquote, the black market, that they will be reported. Let's go to a quick ad break. When we come back, we'll get more reaction.